Welcome back, horror fans, to the Weird Kid Horror Show. I am your host, the Weird Kid. Today, I'm going to do a quick, super easy, super inexpensive tutorial on how you can make insulator coils for your mad scientist contraption or your Halloween prop just using dollar store cups. Um, super cheap. You go to the dollar store, you get a whole pack of these things. I'm going to show you what you can do with them. So, this is the last time you're going to see my face. I want you to see the work. So, let's get going. So, yes, you can buy these. They're plastic wine glasses. You can buy them at the dollar store. If you need to do a price check at the dollar store, there's something wrong. Alright, so I'm going to open these up. So here you got the first part of your wine glass. Pretty simple, right? We're going to set that right there, just like that. Then, I'm going to take all the bases. So, normally you'd, you'd stick them in there. Uh, ooh, that one's broke, actually. This is broke. I'm going to set that one aside. You're going to want one that has the little stem on here. So, you're going to take this. That's broke. So, let's take another one. Yeah, when you buy them, examine them. Make sure you got, you got them so that they're not broke. Okay, so this is what you do. You just simply slide it in and voila. you got a little glass. Okay? But we're not going to do that. We're going to turn this into a contraption. Something that you can use for Halloween. Well, I showed you guys when I did uh, my Frankenstein contraption. Uh, I had gotten my hands on real insulating coils. Uh, insulators. Uh, from the power company. They had replaced a bunch of holes. Um, so I was able to snag a bunch of them up. And I know that you're not going to have access to that. So I'm going to show you a real cheap and inexpensive way of doing it. The other thing that I had suggested is uh, Walmart, among many other places, carries these toilet plungers. They look like insulating insulators. Uh, and that's another option too, but I'm going to show you something here real super quick and easy. I'm going to give you the material list and everything. Alright, so first thing we need is super glue. You need the cups. We need super glue. I'm going to turn this thing upside down. And then the first thing I'm going to do is rather than putting it on the way it's supposed to go, I'm going to put it on upside down. And in order to do that, I just need to put a little drop super glue and I'm gonna stick it right on there to get the first one started make sure it's plush flush flush however you say it hold that on there and get it secured make sure that's good and center um, I think I might use some from another another package at a dollar a package you just can't go wrong it comes with uh, six glasses they have different shapes and sizes um, this one here has more of a I don't know I guess this is a, a champagne glass style west where that one is a wine glass shape and um, you could use either or if you wanted to it's up to you me I like this one um, so that's what I'm gonna go with here <coughs> alright so got a bunch of these things together <coughs> I'm gonna even go a bit more put these all together you can glue them if you want I really don't think it's necessary um, and then the last thing, of course, we're going to do, I'm going to put some glue in here. I'm going to stick that on there. It's already taken shape. Now we're going to be putting this on top. Okay, so that's the basic, that's the basic shape that you're going to end up with. That can go on your, 
you want to make sure that it's glued in place properly. I'm going to leave that in there, I think, because, you know, when we do props, things can, they can go wrong, you know, things can fall apart on you. You know, I could get mad and just, ah, and throw this stuff around and get all pissed off and everything, but, no, you just, you gotta, you, sometimes you gotta take a step back and walk away from a project for a bit and then come back to it. But you absolutely have to be patient no matter what, you know? So my mistake was I didn't let it cure enough. So I'm going to put some glue on here. I'm going to give it a chance to cure correctly. And then when we come back, this thing should all be glued together and dried. And then we can move on to the paint. All right, we're back, guys. So this is one of those cases where super glue is not a fan of this type of plastic. Uh, when you put it on there, you're going to have to hold it on there and let it cure really good uh, for it to bond. So in this case, I don't have any. You might want to use two-part epoxy just for the, the initial attachment, okay? Um, so I've got this glued. It's curing. I'm going to put it aside, okay? We're going to work on And I've already painted the ping pong ball flat black okay this is what's going to go on the very top this is the conductor okay so we got the insulator and then on top is the conductor now on the conductor you could have this is where all the juices this is where the electricity is you could have an electrode coming out of it or you could have coiled wires going to some kind of a device or whatever but uh, for me I just the first thing I do is I paint it black and then I take uh, antique copper and then with that I just I'm gonna do a dry brush on it. I'm not gonna go crazy just one most most mad scientist contraption if you look at them in any kind of a movie they're all like worn down and beat up and I think that's been by design you know it's to give it more of a scary ambience you know to look more menacing so I'm dry brushing this thing anti-copper Copper is a very conductive material, and that's why you'll see a lot of it in, uh, you know, like, uh, copper is used for the lead wires on a Jacob's Ladder, and, um, it's, it's used a lot. But speaking of contraptions, mad scientist contraptions, does anybody know the origin of mad scientist contraptions? Well, you could go back to the silent film Metropolis. There was quite a setup in there uh, as far as set design. A lot of uh, high voltage equipment and machinery. But there is one individual that should be a household name, but isn't. So I'm here to educate you. If you watch the original Frankenstein with Boris Karloff and you look in the laboratory where the creation was brought to life, it's alive! It's alive! Look at all the props and high voltage uh, machinery that's in that room. That's all because of one man. This man's name was Kenneth Strickfadden. And Kenneth Strickfadden got his start as a amusement park electrician turned mad scientist he used to build all these high voltage toys if you will these jacobs ladders and spark gaps and tesla coils and they were all used all of his devices were used in the original frankenstein Sadly, the man was never credited for it. I don't agree with that at all, but he wasn't credited for it. Because after that, he was asked to take part in a tremendous amount of sci-fi films. Uh, you can see his contraptions in just about everything. So I suggest to educate yourself on this man, because let's face it, if, when you were a kid, I know when I was a kid, and, and if I was to draw a mad scientist laboratory, the props and the machinery and the devices that I were drawn were Kenneth Strickfadden 
influence. That's that's where that came from. Okay, so I've taken my ping pong ball and I've painted it black first and then I went ahead and dry brushed it anti-copper. So now it looks like a little copper ball. And I think we're dry enough here. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the remaining coils, if you will. Some super glue. Stick that on there. Okay. So now it's starting to look like something, right? This is going to go on top. And there you have the makings of a mad scientist insulator coil with a condenser on the end of it. But we're going to go a step further. We're going to paint this thing. We're going to make it look more uh, real, if you will. So I'll take you over here. We're going to go ahead and paint this thing. All right, so I got this thing all ready to go. I got my, uh, me, I like to use the Rust-Oleum. It's a uh, two times ultra cover paint and primer. And I, as I said, I went with a satin finish. And the first thing I want to do is paint the underside of these ribs. Because those are going to be the hardest to get at. I'm just going to go ahead and dust them. Slowly turning this thing as I go along. Get some even coverage. Getting up there real good. Making sure there's nothing left. No clear plastic. Dust it. Now I say dusting, it's because you don't really, if you don't have much experience with spray paint, you don't want to get on there and, and stay in one spot. You want to dust it. And the reason that is, is because if you stick a can of paint and, and you know, blast it, you're going to have some drips. And that's not going to, you don't want that. You want nice, clean coating. So it's better to dust it, as I say. And then if you need to come back and uh, repaint it again after, you can. All right, so... Uh, there's a couple more spots here. Make sure I got the coverage I need in there. Turn it. All right, so <clears throat> I got the first part painted. I'm gonna have to let it dry because I need to be able to handle that to get the rest of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop, and then we'll come back and finish that part. Okay, it's dry enough where I can hold this end of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and blast the rest of it. Dusting, dusting, as I say, dusting. Even coats. Don't go too heavy. You just want to get even coat. And there we have it. It's painted. It's done. So we're going to let this dry. And then we're going to go ahead and attach our ball. So we got it all painted. This table is crooked, so it might look crooked but I assure you it's not um, the last thing that we're going to need to do is just simply glue our ping pong ball on the top so put some glue there make sure if it's going to drip it's going to drip on the inside not on the outside we'll put a little bit on the ball and stick it right on top and there you go guys there's your Kenneth Strick Fadden inspired insulator with condensing condenser on the end of it. Uh, now that you can do too, but you have to be really careful with this type of plastic because it cracks really easy. Is once you get it mounted on whatever it is that you're using it for. Me, I like to build two of these and put them in between something, a focal point, like maybe it's a brain in a jar or uh, something, a plasma ball or something electrical. Um, I like to put one on each side of it uh, and then do it the same way. But you could drill a little hole in here and then run. Me, I like to use a uh, leather cord that you can buy at Walmart. It looks like wires and you can paint it whatever color you want. That way you can see wires coming out of it uh, that, that go into the machine or whatever it is that you're doing. 
But there you have it, it's uh, super easy and it'll look real good on your prop and it, it's super inexpensive. So, so let me know what you think down in the comments and if you haven't done so already, like and subscribe. This is just a, a I call it a five minute build, something super easy. Um, but I've got some bigger, more in-depth props coming. So uh, please like and subscribe and click that bell, it's gonna let you know when I upload again. So, I appreciate you, and until next time, peace.